Got it. Yeah. So uh, c- could you explain uh, very simply what your fasting regimen looks like? Yeah. So as outlined right in the now, book. the first pillar is the intermittent fasting, which which I recommend people eat um, no more than four to eight hours in a day, four to eight hours in a day. Um, most people try to hit six. I, I myself am, am closer to four. And, um, and effectively, they are eating anything that has a calorie in that window of time. Okay. One, one way of looking at this is you could, in theory, eat as much food as you want in that period of time, but your belly's going to hurt. You know, you're, you're going to have some upset stomach and you won't lose any weight. But on a metabolic profile perspective and longevity perspective, you still get all the benefit. Okay. Oh, so you're not okay. shortchanging yourself, but you're not losing, you're not losing the weight. Okay. okay. The reason the second pillar where I tell people to go plant-based and start monitoring some of their macros, specifically get enough protein and lower the carbs is because now we sort of enter this realm where you're eating a, a reasonable amount of calories for weight loss and you're, you're picking nutritional ratios that give your body the nutrition it needs um, for, for best for best function. And, and so, you know, my, my interest in, in creating the Athos diet was basically optimizing orthodox fasting, period. Um, I, felt like, I felt like I was a husky child eating all the wrong stuff, mm. you know, um, eating all the white bread and candy and endless amounts of, um, you know, of, uh, of, you know, many things that I just shouldn't have been eating. And I was putting on weight. I wasn't feeling strong. I wasn't feeling light. And I started to realize that the right tweaks and setting up these parameters, which is really orthodox fasting par escalance, you start getting the benefit. And and talking about the intermittent fasting rule, where does that come from? I mean, it's so irrational, right? Why would a human being stop eating when they have access to food? And we can see that it's irrational because people have access to all the food in the world in the United States, and they're obese, and they're suffering for it, and we're, we're dying from stroke and Alzheimer's and diabetes, terrible disease, diabetes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so it's irrational to stop eating, Mm -hmm. but you find these monks in Manathos and different monasteries around the world who irrationally have this concept that they're going to fast with Jesus Christ until the ninth hour. And they didn't know they were intermittent fasting, but they were knowing that they were doing something for, for Christ. And suddenly God gives them this, this, this benefit, you know, this carrot for saying, Hey, thank you. You know, it's, it felt like discipline. It felt difficult, but here's 30% more of your life. You know, here's more functionality and here's better health. That's amazing. You know, you know, to, to add to, uh, from a theological perspective, something that I I feel like would make sense in, in everything that you're saying, um, is that, uh, so some of the fathers say that, uh, the rule that was given to Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden, after God has created the world and the heavens and the animals, it says, uh, do not eat, do not, uh, you can eat from everything except from here. So, so yes. in other words, the obedience or the rule or whatever you want to call it that was given to Adam was don't eat, mm-hmm. but Adam ate and therefore lost all of paradise mm-hmm. in, in wow. the act of eating, he loses life. Yeah. So now the fathers say that in the act of abstaining, we gain life, we gain mm-hmm. paradise back, which is, which is a theological understanding of like of um, uh, a theological uh, understanding f- or um, for not eating, for fasting, for, for all these things. Yes. And then the second thing that comes to mind is that, uh, you know, I, I, in, in the Old Testament, eating meat wasn't introduced until after Noah. It wasn't yes. even. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was. It was. It wasn't even after he got kicked out of paradise. It was. It was a significant time before even meat was allowed in the diet right. of of humanity. Right. No, that that is. I actually, you know, have been aware of that myself. I thought that was uncanny that lifespan, you know, reportedly drops, you know, after the time of Noah. And it, it, you could say environmental changes too. But it's it's an interesting thing that it highlights that point. Yeah. That you know, in, in the same chapter of of saying now you can start eating meat, that lifespan starts to drop significantly. And, um, and, you know, it's, I guess, again, as they say, you know, uh, death came into the world to, to keep sin from, from living forever. 